So right up front, the iPhone and the iPad interfaces look a little bit different, but they are generally the same. You'll find that the menu and the settings and everything else are identical. The only thing that the iPhone does not have is the pre-runner bar option, which you find in a Pro Pack subscription. And this is really just due to the size of the screen and not being able to cram that pre-runner functionality into the smaller iPhone. You will eventually probably see an iPad version of LeadNav make its way into the iPhone. Uh, but for now, just know that the interfaces are pretty much the same. They just look a little bit different. Right away, you'll see the HUD, which is the heads up display. Uh, it's mostly for running routes and navigation. And we'll go over that a little bit in our route class. Just like any map application, you can move around the screen by using your finger. You can zoom with your fingers. Right now you can see the map imagery is loading from the internet or a data plan. We'll go over a little bit later using the in-app subscriptions down below in settings to be able to save and prep out this background map imagery for offline use. But right now we'll continue going over the main display here you have zoom, which will take you between the zoom increments. Right here we're at 15 zoom, 16 zoom, 17 zoom, and 18 zoom. Up here on the top right are your crosshairs, which will lock on your position. And just know that I just fired this GPS up and we are indoors. So down here on the bottom left, you'll see a GPS satellite indicator symbol. And this isn't real time. This is just to kind of give you a general idea of what's going on uh, when you initially fire up LeadNav GPS. If you're using one of our external XGPS 160 Bluetooth antennas, over here on the right, you'll see a DUAL logo pop up, letting you know you're synced to that external antenna uh, for more uh, information on that you can watch the Bluetooth antenna video. I'm going to hit the crosshairs again. You can see it took a couple toggles of the crosshairs to kind of lock on our position. We are indoors right now running this class and I'm bouncing between a Wi-Fi IP location and the internal GPS location provided by the iPad. Right here you can see the zoom level that you're currently on. This is 18, 17, 16, 15, and 14, and all the way up. Once you get accustomed to the different zoom levels, you won't really need to look at this bar. I know it's kind of hard to see, but it's kind of just to give you a general, um, to get your eyes calibrated to what you're looking at as far as zoom levels. And this comes into play later when you want to save out background map imagery for offline use. You'll be familiar with the different zoom levels that are available to you under that map type. Up here is the menu. And we'll be going over the menu later on, but the menu houses all of our GPS files. It's how we handle and organize all your GPS files. Down here on the bottom right is the settings, and we'll piece these settings apart as we go through the classes. Um, but the first setting you can take a look at is units. And you can change your coordinate display, uh, depending if you know if you're going to be run off a, a Latin long decimals, degrees, minutes, degrees, minutes, seconds. Or if you're one of our military folks, you'll probably switch over to MGRS, Military Grid Reference System. You can switch your measurement units. Right now we're in miles, we're gonna keep it in miles. And I'm gonna back out of the settings. Down in settings, we can change our background map type under map. Right now we are in Bing satellite. We can switch to Bing hybrid. And you can see this is all loading from the internet right now. Again, with the core LeadNav GPS application, you can use all these map types while online. 
One of the big bonuses of the in-app subscriptions is the ability to allow you to save and store these background map imagery types for offline use. What that means is when you're offline, the background will be blank, it'll be gray. While you're at home, you can utilize those map types to plan out your trip. But when you leave and go off the grid, again, that background map imagery will be gray, it'll be blank, unless you use one of the subscriptions to save and prep out your background map imagery. Just think of it as a piece of paper in the background. You have your GPS files sitting up top, and on the bottom you have different map layers that you can save, and it's just like a map, a paper map. You can store and prep those paper maps for offline use. And we'll continue to go down through these map types. You can see you have a couple cartoon map types available to you. Under the subscriptions, you'll get a couple extra map types down here. These map types with the cloud next to them allow you to save them for offline use with one of the in-app subscriptions. Also down here in maps, this is for another day, another class, but you can add custom maps through different URLs. So if you're running your own server or if we're running a server for you, this is a professional grade service that we do. We can basically collect aerial and satellite map imagery and build up your own custom map types. Uh, we do this for oil companies and stuff like that that want to save their data in the back end. Overlays down here. This is a, just an example of an overlay background. You don't want to leave this on. If you leave this on, it's going to confuse the map types. And what it's meant for is if I switch up here to base map none, you can see this world map in the, in the background. And really that's just an example. What we can do with overlays is generally we can pull through big computers massive amounts of background map imagery, or we can provide these through professional grade services to where you'll have your own map type file that you can load in the back end of the lead nav to display offline. And you can basically with these overlays have a massive hard drive filled with all these areas that you can just slap in the lead nav GPS before you go out the door on your trip. A lot of our professional units don't have the time to sit there and save out all this background satellite map imagery within the app using one of the in-app subscriptions. So this is more of a pro-grade service, a military-grade service that allows you to prep and store those background maps for offline use. But again, you don't want to leave this background overlay running while you're running other map types. So I'm going to go in here to map and I'm going to turn that off. And you can see I'm my base map right now I have selected as none, so it's a blank gray screen. If you leave on your trip with the basic core lead nav GPS application, you can plan your entire trip, but just know that this is the background you're gonna be staring at when you go offline. Again, I'm gonna center on our position. I'm gonna go down to settings, go under maps, and we're gonna choose Bing satellite as a background. I'm going to zoom in. Right now I'm at 15 zoom, 16 zoom. I'll hit the crosshairs to recenter on our position. And we're going to go through the different settings as we go through the classes. But a couple more up front. Down here you have support. This is how you get to our online tutorials. You can also see the current lead nav GPS version that you're running. Down here is the in-app purchases. This is how you would subscribe to the in-app subscriptions. You can see your current expiration date of your current subscription. On these in-app subscriptions, you just wanna make sure that your expiration date isn't gonna fall on one of your main events. So go ahead before your trip, before you go offline, when you're at home, doing all your initial testing and your updates on lead nav, just make sure that you update that subscription before you go on your trip. And down here, you'll see some of the marker sets that we'll talk about later. Display. If you're not running navigation and you just wanna run lead nav GPS as a map, you can switch on the hide HUD and this will remove the heads-up display. 
when you're not running a route. I'm going to switch the HUD back on for now. Back up out of settings. Compass. You won't really have to touch anything in here. Uh, this is more legacy settings that we had. Magnetic and true, you're going to keep it in magnetic. You won't have to touch the compass bias. What that was for is when uh, we were in our up armored vehicles or heavy metal vehicles, the magnetic interference would cause the compass heading to shift off course. So you could go in there and set that or uh, calibrate that off of the, uh, the direction that you're heading. You don't really need to do that anymore because over two or three miles per hour, lead nav kicks into a velocity vectoring where it locks on heading off of speed and distance and, and direction traveled. So you will see it as you come up to a stop, you'll see your compass shift off. And this is from the metal interference. So I'm gonna back out of that. Location tracking. Location tracking, we'll talk about in another class, but that is the ability for everybody to see each other while in the field. Uh, we do that through cell, and we also have our LN Iridium satellite uh, communications and tracking, which is worldwide for everybody to see each other in lead nav off the grid to off the grid. We're gonna back out of that. Voice prompts, these will be more apparent when we go over navigation and routing. And that's it for now for settings. Menu. All right, the menu is where all of our GPS files are handled. We broke these up into collections, which is essentially the same thing as a folder. And this is a way to organize all your GPS files into one place so you can store them, back them up, and share them out per mission, per event, per area. However you want to organize those folders is up to you. And to kick things off, we're going to start a new collection which is a new folder. And we're gonna call it training. There we go. I'm gonna call it training trip. And that's again, just naming the folder. And now you can see it takes us into the training trip folder or collection. There's three things that we're going to spend some time talking about, routes, tracks, and markers. And down here, you can rename the collection, duplicate the collection, or share it out. Or any of the individual files through messaging, uh, airdrop, mail. There's a number of different ways you can do this. All right, so backing up out of this new collection that we built. You can see now in the main collection menu, we have one collection. If I wanted to start another folder, I just go up here again, hit new. And we can do, let's say, Baja trip 2019. And now you can see we started another folder or collection to house all of our GPS files for that trip. Routes, tracks, and markers. We have zero of each in there right now. We haven't built any. I back up. Now you can see that we have two folders or two collections. I could go up here again. And we can call this next one Arizona. Trails. Hit OK, and we just build another collection or folder. Back up. Now in the collections list, you see we have three GPS folders. Training trip, Arizona trails, Baja trip, 2019. Again, you can break up these folders and organize them however you want to to keep everything in one place. 